It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday Night Primetime. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. The kick unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they'll be led out by the first overall pick from a couple of drafts ago, former Clemson Tiger Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about with Trevor Lawrence face coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and doing everything in his power to follow through. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? From the 29, Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Now Lawrence. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards. Turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Lawrence to throw, and that'll be incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. 
Again, it's Lawrence. Finds his tight end, Ingram. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Well, the Chargers trot out their dime package, expecting a throw on third down. Lawrence. And that is incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. DeAndre Carter back deep. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Here are the Chargers ready to go on offense, led by their first-round pick in 2020. The man out of Oregon, Justin Herbert. It hasn't taken Herbert long to earn the status of one of the league's best and most entertaining passers. He's locked and loaded on every snap. In the second he sees an opening, the ball's soaring downfield. You've got to be on your A game at all times against him. The second you slip up, he's liable to burn you. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 24. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. It's Eckler again, and he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, they set the power set out there, and their job is to be man-on-man -man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing it for a loss. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Here's Herbert. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 44-yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Trayvon Walker makes the tackle. I think we just saw their partner was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Herbert. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy-toes if that one was completed. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. From the shotgun, here's Herbert. He's got it to Williams. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to make it fourth down.
So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This from 54 yards away. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Charles, 54 yards. I'm surprised that came up short. I would agree with that one because normally, if he misses, it's accuracy, not length, because he has plenty of leg for that. But maybe it's like I hit my golf shot, you know? Maybe it's like my wedge. You know, when you chili dip and you hit the ground ahead of it, sometimes that'll shorten your distance as well. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 44. Now ETN to start the drive. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. On second down, ETN once more. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go play action now. Lawrence rolling to his right. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary, all of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll try the left side with E. Now the ball comes loose. And picked up by the Chargers. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And a little careless there, Charles, on that carry. And it's not just having two hands on the ball. It's tucking it away. It's using your body to keep people shielded off. It's so many different things into taking care of it and having ball security. In that case, though, we didn't see it happen. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. On second down, Eckler. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First down, and they stick with Eckler. And this time, not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Chad Muma brings him down on that one defensively. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end, and they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. 
And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Now it's Herbert. Got a man, it's complete, it's Palmer. And he is going to have the Chargers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first and 10, Herbert. Now left, he's got it to Everett. And they'll work this down inside the 30. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. Herbert throwing again. On the throw, let him too much that time. It's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Here's Herbert. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. On the screen, this is Eckler. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Chargers will bring out the field goal unit now. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Right now, they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble. So you have a feeling taking care of the football is certainly paramount right now. Yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive, is it? That means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message. Guys, ball security, paramount. Let's take care of it. And if we do, we've got a chance to put points on the board. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Well, congratulations to them. They come through defensively with another stop. And let's face it, this secondary, they've gone unchallenged so far in the first half. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Lawrence will throw. 
And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. On third down, here's ETN. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. That's going to be... And now look at this. Big game by Fumble. And the Jags grab it. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it. And not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. Following the fumble recovery, Lawrence. He'll get that underneath ETN. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Looking to throw again on second down. Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Now Lawrence on first down. And one more time, here's Kirk. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Right 
So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the right hash, this from 48. Patterson's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble to recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. Field goal is all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. And we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all time. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Chargers in that first half. And in a tie ball game, they've got to be asking themselves, what can we do to get this passing game on track for the second half to come? Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they did not have quite the same amount of success in the passing game that their counterparts did, as you get a look at the numbers there. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Second half ready to roll. Two field goals, a combined output in half number one. Could be first touchdown wins. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. They started on the ground with Eckler. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. They'll find Everett there, complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Unnecessary run. Ethan. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow. And he didn't on that play. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Herbert now. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice.
They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 and the 34. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Eckler now between the tackles. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Devon Hamilton with the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and ten coming up. Once more, here's Eckler. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. We try to create space for your running back. The first thought is how physical is the offensive line? Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they outleveraged them and won the battle. Justin Herbert looking to pass. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. The Chargers will bring out the field goal unit now. From the right hash, this from 33. And his kick is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. team on the field now as they will send this one away from the six here comes the Jags offense now time for their first possession of half number two and they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago and I think even though they trail in the game now I would consider that a win for their defense and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 18. Now Lawrence. Complete to Jones. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They'll run with ETN. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Move the chains. A gain of seven on third down. Brett, what were they thinking? 
mistaken on defense there. They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. A gain of eight there on the play. And it'll be second in a couple. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and two. On play action, Lawrence. His throw incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Third and two, now Lawrence. Flush to his right. And Ingram holds it in. And they're going to get this up to midfield. They talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. First and ten, it's ETN. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. We're there to make the tackle, Khalil Mack. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. So that, that was a very nice play, Charles, from a very speedy cornerback. Yeah, this defense as a whole has really been flying to the football all game long. They have not allowed too much of anything. And here's another example. A great play there to get in and disrupt it before it could get going. And the next-gen stats show us the top speed there, better than 18 miles an hour. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Now Lawrence to throw. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Going with their tight end on fours. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. 
And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second and ten, Lawrence. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Joey Bosa able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Back to throw, Lawrence. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game, and for a second, I thought they had it right there. By looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. It's a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. Caught on the right side by Jones. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. Here's Lawrence. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Lawrence. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Official foul, roughing the passer, defense. The Charles are trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. They'll try to run with ETN, and he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. From the two now, second and goal. Throwing now, Lawrence. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Riley Patterson now for the extra point. Touchdown that puts him out in front here in the final minute of the contest. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Herbert and the Chargers down 10-6, 45 seconds remaining. 
How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. on first down. Herbert going to throw. Finding Allen. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Throwing Herbert. Got a man. It's complete. It's Palmer. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Herbert. That is caught. It's Williams. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. the lead here of course with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Herbert to throw and he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown and they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. CD that was an all or nothing drive to win this football game and they rose to the occasion to take the lead here in the waning moments. And how about how they got it done. No timeouts left. They take it downfield, execute perfectly, and get it done. Now they don't leave their opponent with a heck of a lot of time on the clock. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was Keenan Allen who finished it all off with the touchdown reception. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but 
Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time.